an overnight flight on a small and tired aircraft with an underwhelming crew and meal service and a cranky group of passengers made for a wonderful experience on this flight down to Sao Paulo. The full trip report is coming up. A very good evening from Bogota's El Dorado International Airport once again. This time though, just passing through on my way to Sao Paulo. First though, let's talk about aviation YouTuber Bingo. What is it? It's just a fake bingo game that I made up of what has become 25 cliche videos in the past decade. If you watch a lot of trip reports, all of this will make perfect sense. Today, I'm coloring in a new square for declaring Avianca as quote unquote the worst, or at least close to that. If none of that made sense to you, my apologies. We're moving on. Despite being smack in the middle of the terminal, I managed to walk right past the lounge twice. Head upstairs though, and you'll be in the lounge, which reminds me of a really nice hospital cafeteria. Drink selections were okay, but the food was a bit of a doozy. Yes, that is pasta with nacho cheese sauce on it. And no, I didn't do that. That's how it was handed to me. Needless to say, I had three of these salads. Lucky for us, the part of the lounge that was closed actually looked quite nice and relaxing and comfortable. Oh well. I didn't have time to stay around for a while though as my next flight was coming up quickly. A few moments later, it was time to board and I realized my mistake in selecting my seat. The leather-ish recliners were stocked with a blanket and pillow on each of them. While legroom in the bulkhead is kind of limited, it's a trade-off for being able to get out of your seat if you need to. Let's look at the layout of this 30, oh wait, five year old Airbus A319. Honestly, five years old is tough to believe. There are three rows of business class up front. Besides the reduced leg room, which is fine, the front row also has the IFE screens in the center console, which makes it a good four inches wider, making each seat two inches narrower. Because of the layout, Unless you're a child, I promise that you'll change the volume or hit the call button with your thigh at some point. At least though, there were individual air vents and the seat, or I guess the wall pocket, kinda held everything I needed it to, and each seat had its own semi-universal outlet. If you truly want to know how big Brazil is, take this flight. Tonight we'd be taking off from Bogotá's runway 13 left, up to 37,000 feet. For this almost six hour flight, into Guarulhos' runway 9 right. Pushback was just about on time and we taxied to the runway with all the lights on throughout, which I'm just not a fan of. A short taxi later, we were lining up for runway 13 left for this takeoff to the southeast. The spool up is coming up next. By the way, if you've gotten this far and are enjoying the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for two new hotel or flight reviews every week. Feel free to turn on notifications or leave a comment below if you have any questions about this or any other video. I make a point of replying to every comment. A genuine thank you in advance. My neighbor wasn't too keen on following the posted signs. The IFE is decent, it has enough content, but my screen and my neighbor's screen would always turn off intermittently if you used it as a touch screen. Meal service was up next on the not so substantial tray table. We had, well, to be honest, I, I'm still not quite sure. They called it a cheese sandwich. Sure, it had cheese, 
but it also had sun-dried tomatoes and I think chicken, I hope chicken, and absolutely no sauce. Imagine if you went to a salad bar and you blindfolded yourself and you put together a sandwich. You'd almost be guaranteed to come away with something better than this. At least this time though, the chips were inside the box, so I guess the box did serve a purpose. The blanket and pillow were fine. Uh, actually, no, the pillow was really good, and the amenity kit was the biggest shock of the flight. It was actually really good. There was simply no room for me to shoot it on board though, so here's taking a look at it while at the Hotel Unique. The bathrooms were kept tidy throughout, but nothing special. Though I do suspect that sunrise would have been something special had we stayed above the clouds just a little bit longer. We approached Sao Paulo from the north, of course, and found our way into Grajulos in the far north of this ginormous city. Landing again with all the cabin lights on and getting a peek of the daylight to come. Immigration and baggage were super quick at this early hour and soon we were on the hour long drive to the city center. That's all there is to write, so let's get into the flip-flop score. The seat, lounge, and food were the low points. This same flight during the day would possibly be a little bit better, but an overnight red-eye on a baby bus is just no fun no matter what class you're flying in. Overall, it's a 66 out of 100. As I mentioned in my last video, Avianca is fine if you're on one of their 787s. Otherwise, try to stay away. Despite the lackluster experience though, I do hope you found this report useful. If you did, please subscribe for two new flight or hotel reviews every week. Join me next time for the very posh and unique Hotel Unique.